Hello, parents. Looking at current affairs for 10th November, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 14. We we'll look at them in detail. The first one: Constitution bench to hear plea on a bid to sway Supreme Court judge. So this is a case of Supreme Court doing favors in a particular case. So this case is actually still pending in the Supreme Court. So the influence which has been brought in here is said to be a Hawala dealer who had conspired with a former Orisha High Court judge. So this corruption case involving the Supreme Court bench and this bench was headed by present Chief Justice of India has been headed by present Chief Justice of India Deepak Mishra. So CJ Deepak Mishra was has also heard this case in August September 2017. So this petition which has come before the Supreme Court has been referred to a five judge constitution bench. You know? so the first five judges of the Supreme Court in order of seniority will hear this case. So this is a corruption case involving the highest excellence of the judiciary. And actually the case is before the CBI but then the petition is asking that it be transferred to a special investigation team led by a retired CGI. So that fair investigation is brought in because CBI is a government controlled authority. It will affect the independence of the judiciary. So now this hearing, even the petition says that CGI Deepak Mishra should not head this hearing because he is also a person involved in this matter. Right? So then the next news item is, then the next news item is GST Council to tighten norms for composition scheme. So this is regarding the 23rd meeting of the GST Council which is going to take place in Guwahati and some changes in GST are expected. So what is GST Council all about to we look at it too. So what expect what is expected is cut in tax rates on a large number of products as such and also the composition scheme is expected to be liberalized. What is composition scheme also we have discussed earlier. You should know about it. It is a scheme for small businesses and traders. So they ha don't have to pay a uh, tax on each commodity but they can pay a flat rate of tax which is at a lower rate on their complete turnover. So this is applicable for a threshold of the turnover. So annual turnover threshold actually originally was quite low but it has now from 75 lakh it has been increased to 1 crore and now it is expected that it may be raised to even 1.5 crore after this meeting. So this is one aspect. Also with respect to composition scheme there is also GOM which has been formed group of ministers. So this GOM is apart from the JST council. So GOM which was asked to simplify the composition scheme has recommended that a new regulation should bar all associated enterprises for participating in the scheme. Because what is seen is that the composition scheme has been misused. Means it is for smaller businesses. So such if a business is not small it is bifurcated divided into smaller businesses to be eligible for composition scheme. So in composition scheme the benefit is that the tax rate is low and is on the entire turnover plus also another aspect to it is there is no input tax credit given but then it is expected that maybe input tax credit should also be given in some cases so that is also being looked into. So this is another change which is expected. So combined threshold should be seen for all these associated enterprises to be eligible for composition scheme is the recommendation of GOM. And another GOM recommendation is harmonizing the tax rates on rest on all restaurants. For restaurants, there are separate tax rates for air condition and non-air condition. So all should be in tax at a single rate of 12% is also a recommendation, which we'll have to see whether it's implemented or not. So now you should know what is GST Council. So GST Council is chaired by the finance minister, Mr. Arun Jetli. It comprises of union ministers to Minister of State for Finance Revenue and also Minister of Finance or any other minister nominated by each state government. So center is also represented having one third voting power and state is represented having two third voting power. Minimum quorum here means minimum number of members who should be present for GST Council meeting to take place is 50% of the members. And decision is taken by three-fourths majority. Right? And about the composition scheme. So this is the composition scheme for small businesses. The turnover threshold may change. Presently it is 1 crore. For manufacturing sector small businesses, the total GST rate on them is 2% on the entire turnover. For traders, it is 1%. For suppliers of food, drinks, etc., it is five percent. And service providers cannot opt for it's only for businesses, goods. It's not for services. Then next is Solar Commission reports scorches team Chandi. 
So this is regarding the solar scam in Kerala. The former chief minister of Kerala, Uman Chandi, is the one who is actually an accused in this case and a commission had been appointed by him, him, he himself, his own government in 2013, but now he's no longer in power. And the present government, Pinayari Vijayan is the present chief minister, the present government has tabled this report of the Solar Judicial Commission, which is headed by G. Sivarajan. So this table, report has been tabled in the assembly and it has declared that the investigation and follow-up action should be initiated against the former chief minister. So it has indicated further you uh, know the allegations against Mr. Chandi and others are valid and further investigation should be done into the accusations. There are also accusations of sexual gratification being extracted from one of the main person behind the solar scam as such. So this Saritha S. Naya. So this is the whole case. So we'll see it's actually political angle also associated with the two rival parties of Kerala being involved in this. The one party is in power and the other party which is out of power presently, the former chief minister here is an accused. So, the truth behind it will be known now. So, this is the whole scam. The solar scam actually was about the people being cheated by this Sarita S. Nair who is the main accused. So, several people were cheated of crores of rupees and by you know, by offering solar panel solutions to them. And they uh, uh, alleged that they had links with various businessmen and also with the former chief minister of Manchana. So, she was arrested too as such and this was out on bail. Then next is, High Court restrains Rajasthan government from increasing quota. So, this is regarding Rajasthan government's reservation policy. So, they actually passed a law this law was to provide additional 5% reservation and create a new category of most backward in OBCs. So this was to provide reservation especially to Gujars and also for other nomadic communities. So this 5% reservation to these five communities as such, Gujar, Banjara, Gadia, Lohar, Raika and Gadaria. So this actually took the total reservation in Rajasthan to 54%. So it exceeded the 50% mark and actually the Supreme Court ruling in Indra Sahani case as such states that the total reservation cannot exceed 50%. So that is why now the Rajasthan High Court has restrained the government of Rajasthan, the BJP government of Rajasthan from implementing the provisions of this bill which has been passed by its state legislature in October 2017. So, OBCs were given 21% reservation, up to now it has gone up to 26% and total reservation as such of all categories is 54%. So, that is there. But then the state government of Rajasthan is arguing that we should get this reservation because the OBC communities as such are comprising of 52% of the state population. So, it has exceeded 50% mark. So, in this special state condition we should be allowed to provide this reservation earlier two such legislations have been passed but every time the high court has struck down such laws of the rajasthan state government they also say there is no quantifiable data supporting the claim of butchers backwardness to because of which they have been given reservation so this is again a political angle to it to butchers have been agitating for long for reservation though they are not per se backward community but this has I don't know this demand has also been acceded to by the Rajasthan government but then constitutionally and judicially there are hindrances in its implementation. So this is regarding the Indra Sani case of Supreme Court of 1993-2 in which it had provided three main points. So reservation first of all cannot exceed 50% mark. Also creamy layer should be excluded amongst the OBCs and also should be no reservation in promotion. So these are the three key points which were put forth by this landmark judgment of the Supreme Court, Indra Sahani versus Union of India, 1993. Then next is odd even rule back in Delhi from 13th November. So the odd even vehicle rationing scheme of the Delhi government, which had been implemented earlier too, twice actually, in last year that is from Jan 1 to 15 and from April 15 to 30 will now be brought back again for five day period and this five days is starting from November 13th so the next week 
adopted November 13 to 17. This will be implemented in for, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. There would be exceptions as such too. Exception would be for women drivers, two wheelers, vehicles carrying children in school uniform, and also VVIPs. So they would be exempted. Also, at the Delhi Transport Minister has stated that cab aggregators such as Uber and Ola would not be allowed to indulge in surge pricing during this period when they try to increase their rates drastically. So this is going to be implemented. We are seeing that the condition of pollution or the pollution levels in Delhi have been gone quite high. So this is another policy again being brought in by the Delhi government. Also, if motorists do not follow this scheme, then they have to pay 2000 rupees fine. So on odd and even days, that's how it is that you know, private vehicles, they should fly on the basis of the last number of their license plate. So odd number cars will be out on the road on odd dates and even number cars on even dates. Then the next news item is blame game over Delhi air pollution begins. So in Delhi we are seeing so for the last three days the pollution levels have been quite high. The suffer index and also the air quality index. Air quality index is by Central Pollution Control Board that is in the severe category and also the suffer index which is maintained by the Union Earth Science Ministry that has also shown particulate matter levels in Delhi being eight times the standards. So the suffer index system of air quality and weather forecasting and research. So this index also shows severe levels of particulate matter pollution. So in this scenario, now blame game has begun because Chief Minister of Delhi, Mr. Arvind Kejriwal is saying that crop burning in Punjab and Haryana is the main reason behind Delhi becoming a gas chamber for about a month every year during winters because the winter winds as such too, they bring in these particulate matters and pollution from the adjoining states and the winds here remain you know, calm because of which the accumulation takes place here in Delhi region. So that is why he has said that Punjab and Haryana government must provide financially viable alternatives to the farmers who are forced to burn the stubble. So this crop burning which takes place is the crop residue burning basically. So after the harvesting of crops like paddy, rice, what is done is the stubble which remains because harvesting presently is done through mechanization. So with mechanization the stubble as such remains on the, in the buried as such with the roots. So this needs to be removed. So for that, again, machinery is required, which is costly affair. And that is why the farmers tend to burn this stubble. So this crop burning, of course, leads to a huge amount of pollution. So for this, what the farmers demand is that they should be given financial assistance to stop them because stubble, burning of this stubble is actually the cheapest way out work to clear clear their fields quickly for the next sowing season. So this for this, the the Delhi chief minister has said that he will also assist. Delhi government is ready to help in how uh, in the Punjab and Haryana government in helping the farmers as such. So, but then Punjab chief minister says that no, the center has to provide compensation to the farmers. It's not the state's responsibility. So this is the viewpoint of Punjab government. Also, other steps taken in Delhi. It's regarding the banning of construction activities. So construction activities have been banned in the NCR region by National Clearing Tribunal too, and also by Delhi government. And also trucks carrying essential commodities only have been allowed to fly into Delhi. So this is the condition of Delhi. The pollution levels here shown by this NASA's aerosol optical death map. So the darker the optical death color here means more the level of air pollution. Okay. So this is a measure of how airborne particles affect light reflection and absorption by the atmosphere. So the color as such shows high levels of aerosol pollution. Then next is olive ridleys keep date with Orisha coast arrive in large numbers. So olive ridley turtles they arrive every year in near the Orisha coast, basically it's the Gahirmatha beach in Orisha, which is the world's largest rookery for this endangered species. So they arrive offshore for mating during October-November period and then they lay their eggs in January and February. So during this time, there is a requirement to ensure that the olive ridley turtles are safeguarded for this. Now day and night patrolling has been intensified in this region. Also mechanized fishing 
attempts fishing as such is banned during this period because mechanized fishing is the biggest trouble for these turtles they en get entangled in the trawl nets and they succumb so this is there also two speed boats have been acquired by the with the assistance from world bank by the wildlife team here so this is also helping in patrolling and also fencing is expected to be done of this rookery the gharmata beach rookery when the nesting and egg laying takes place so after the mass nesting and egg laying takes place to protect the nests and the eggs this fencing would also be done that is also been proposed so this is the orisha coast here you can see this is the gharmata olive ridley nesting beach and other regions also where mass nesting takes place nearby and also sporadic nesting a little bit of nesting takes place along the entire coast as such then next is mea seeks details of us program so this is regarding a program by us government a funded program for organizations interested in fighting religious intolerance in india so the government here has announced a competition based program so suitable organizations willing to counter religious intolerance in india can you know participate in this program and will get funds amounting to 4,93,827 dollars so this program once it has been announced by the us state department as such the ministry of external affairs has of india has stated that such funding will have to conform to the legal processes at home and it has sought more detail from usa regarding this program so this is what is coming forth in news presently then next is french ambassador optimistic that work on jetapur nuclear power plant will begin soon so this is regarding jetapur nuclear power plant which is proposed to be set up in ratnagiri district in maharashtra and here it is back on the negotiating table between this program between indian and french government actually so the talks on liability the nuclear liability as such the costs for the project are to be finalized again now so this there has been no concurrence on this matter it's a 9900 megawatt plant comprising of six reactors each with a capacity of 1650 megawatts so this is said to be the world's largest nuclear power project in terms of capacity it is going to use epr technology european pressurized reactor technology so this epr technology is also a reason for controversy and also earlier we have seen this was actually project was earlier under a french company areva which ran into bankruptcy so because of this now the french firm edf is is has actually put up its fresh proposals before the npcil nuclear power corporation of india limited in 2016 so this has been finalized now and further discussions negotiations are required on liability and costs now so also for acquisition of land there have been protests by the locals here also anti nuclear activists have been against this project because of safety concerns also the technology the epr technology as they say it is not a proven technology because not a single project under this has been commissioned till date so the even the techno commercial agreements which will be finalized they are also be opposed so but then the foreign minister of france we have french ambassador as such not the minister is the french ambassador to india he has countered this argument regarding the technology to saying that three foreign countries including uk have already begun work on using it so when uk has accepted epr technology so its credibility and reliability is to be upheld as such also china is going to have this technology in place so this is the argument given and it is expected the two nations are negotiating on this and it is expected to be the work on this project to begin soon so this is the region jaitapur in ratnagiri district in the western ghats here where the project is being proposed then next is is militants evacuate last stronghold in syria so the islamic state militants we are seeing are being targeted from all sides and they are losing their ground in syria and iraq and now the last stronghold in syria baqamal which is a strategic town located near the border with iraq so iraq lies here you can see baqamal this has also been lost so the syrian government offensive has left the extremist groups dispersed in villages and small towns in this desert region 
so the syrian military has declared the town is liberated so we have seen so many regions under syria including raqqa here as you can see these erzor which was also in news a few days back have all been lost by islamic state so they have almost completely lost their territorial strongholds here so here you can see the assad regime in, pa in power is shown in pink color the region where Bashar al-Assad government of Syria is in power, supported by Russia. Then the creamish region shows the region which is under the opposition forces of Syria, supported by US government. And the grey region here, this shows the bluish grey region here, shows the region under the Kurds. And this darker region here shows region under Islamic State, which is now further reducing with even Dirazor and Kokamal being lost by Islamic State. Then next is Bandhan Express linking Kolkata with Bangladesh Khulna flagged off. So 10 years after the Kolkata Dhaka passenger train was flagged off, that is Maitri Express. Now, after, now another train, Bandhan Express has been inaugurated. So this will run between Kolkata and Khulna. Kulna is in Bangladesh, so it cover, covers a distance of 172 kilometers. Actually, before India-Pakistan War of 1965, there were trains and there were passenger trains and even freight services running between India and former East Pakistan. But then after the 1965 war, these have been stopped. And 1971 war after that, we know that Bangladesh was also formed as an independent country. But now, this is the second train which has been inaugurated now after the Maitri Express. So this is there. So railway bridges are also there and railway passenger terminus with custom clearance, immigration clearance facility has been inaugurated along with this. So here you can see the map too. So this Maitri Express was from Kolkata in India to Dhaka. So this is the entire history also given. The rail route which was earlier there too. And this rail route was stopped after the Indo-Pakistan War of 1965. So services so had continued despite partition actually in 1947. But stopped after 1965 war. Freight services resumed after Bangladesh was formed as an independent nation. But in 2008, it was the passenger service which was resumed through this Maitri Express. And now after 10 years, the Bandhan Express has also been inaugurated, which will go from Kolkata to Khulna. Then next is U.S. elevates ties with China to resolve global crisis. So U.S. President Donald Trump is on a visit to China and here he has put effect that China is an important ally for USA now. It has rejected the doctrine of containment of China. He says that both the nations are the main pillars for a more inclusive international system. So this status has been accorded to China by the U.S. government here now. U.S. China is important for ma managing global problems like the nuclear tension in North Korea, the stability for stability instability in Afghanistan being resolved, and also fighting against international terrorism. Also, various deals have been signed between the two governments. Deals worth two fifty three billion dollars. So these are in shale energy, aviation, computer chips, etc. So joint natural gas exploration contract has also been signed with state-owned China Petroleum Chemical Corporation. This is the contract in Alaska. Then also long-term supplies contract for LPG has been signed with China. China's cell phone giants Xiaomi, Oppo and Vivo have signed deals with US telecom mobile chip maker Qualcomm. So all these deals have been signed. Even China's Silk Road Fund, which is a unit under the People's Bank of China for the Belt and Road Initiative. They have also set up a joint fund with USA. So US funding is also attracted here. China is also set to be buying Tesla electric cars and Boeing aircrafts from US. So all these deals have been signed. Also with respect to North Korea, there is a difference in the policy of the two countries because China believes that along with the economic pressure which is put on North Korea, the UN sanctions, but apart from that, even dialogue with North Korea is important. But President Donald Trump believes that all nations should stop, all res responsible nations should stop arming, financing and even trading with North Korea. So, 
this is a difference in viewpoint but both have a common stance of achieving denuclearization of north korea so they need to work together on this too then next is fema norms ease to spur investment from overseas so rbi has simplified the fema regulations as such fema is foreign exchange management act which was introduced in 1999 and it has been amended 93 times so now all the 93 amendments actually have been put under one notification also another benefit is that a late submission fee has been put introduced as such so that investors are allowed to regularize any contravention due to non reporting which takes place by paying a late submission fee so such facilitation of uh, you know investment has been brought in through these fema regulations being simplified so any transfer of investment from a non resident indian to any non resident has also been brought under automatic route earlier it was a prior under prior regulatory approval but then reporting has to be done but it's under the automatic route so these regulations have been put there so fema you should know is foreign exchange management act which replaced fera foreign exchange regulation act so it seeks to makes offenses related to foreign exchanges as civil offenses as such to be offenses as such and also it is to consolidate and all laws relating to foreign exchange making it facilitating external trade and payments for promotion of orderly development and maintenance of foreign exchange market in the country so fera was more restricted fema is facilitated then next the last news item is icrisat researchers make peanuts free of aflatoxins so this is icrisat international crop research institute for semi arid tropics this is located in hyderabad so here the researchers have developed these two strategies to keep groundnuts free of aflatoxins so these aflatoxins are toxin produced by fungi aspergillus flavus and aspergillus parasiticus so this contaminates groundnut and also other crops so a strategy to make groundnuts free of aflatoxin actually two strategies have been developed and there is a need there is work being done to merge these two strategies and develop a genetic engineering approach which will facilitate groundnuts production free of aflatoxin so one uh, actually this method is by using alpha alpha genes into groundnut plants so these genes are inserted into groundnut plants which enhances their immunity against fungal infection so this plant induced gene slicing technique is used for this purpose and the first strategy as you can see here one strategy it prevents groundnut from being infected by this fungus so if the fungus it does not infect it there will be no toxin produced and other strategies when the fungus produced from the toxin uh, you know it is even if the if groundnut is infected by the fungus the fungus is prevented from producing this toxin so even if it is infected the toxin or alpha toxin will not be produced so research has been done on these two strategies and ultimate goal is to combine the two traits into a single variety and field trials will also are also expected to start early next year so here you should know about icrisat international crop research institute for semi arid tropics which whose vision is to improve well being of the poor in this region reduce poverty enhance food and nutritional security in this region and also bring in cutting edge science and institutional innovations in asia and sub saharan african region then aflatoxin you should know this is the poison in fungi which affects many crops including groundnut maize sorghum rice etc so it's very difficult to destroy or remove it through normal food processing technique so this alpha alpha gene is been used to provide protection from this fungal infection and this alpha alpha you can see it is used as livestock forage it is probably said to be have originated in southeast asia it was used by the arabs to to feed their horses and they claim that this made their horses swift and strong and it has been named alpha alpha by the arabs meaning father of all food so these are the news items thank you